Tensions escalated along Syria's eastern border region yesterday evening when Iranian proxy militias launched multiple barrages of artillery shells towards a U.S. military base that is situated near the Omar oil field. Spokesman for Operation Inherent Resolve, commonly referred to as the Global Coalition to Defeat the Islamic State, Colonel Wayne Moroto, confirmed that at approximately 7.55 p.m. yesterday evening, U.S. forces in Syria were attacked by multiple rockets, and while damage is being assessed, thankfully, no injuries were reported. In response, the U.S. force on the ground acted in self-defense and conducted counter-battery artillery fire at rocket-launching positions belonging to the Iranian proxy militias in Syria's southeastern al mayadin city and in the Deir Azol countryside, from which the artillery fire emanated. In tandem, clashes erupted along the Euphrates River between the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces and both the Iraqi Popular Mobilization Forces, alongside other Iranian proxy militias, including the Fatimiyun Division, which is comprised of Afghan militants that received their directives directly from the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps and are declaratively loyal to the Islamic Republic's Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. It is important to note that the attack on the U.S. base in northeastern Syria came following an aerial strike that was conducted by the United States Air Force in retaliation for repeated attacks by the same Iranian-backed Popular Mobilization Forces, or PMF, which were currently targeted by means of unmanned aerial vehicles Iraqi military bases housing U.S. personnel, as well as facilities utilized by the Central Intelligence Agency. Subsequently, once the dust cleared from the targeted PMF installations, it has been revealed that at least four PMF militiamen members were killed. Consequently, in the Iraqi capital Baghdad, the Popular Mobilization Forces, or Hashtashabi in Arabic, held a symbolic funeral procession for their slain members, during which they sought to justify their repeated attacks against the American forces in Iraq. استهداف القوات الامريكيه لابطال اللواء 14 هيئه الحج الشعبي وان شاء الله نوقف وقفه جيده لابناء شعبنا العراقي بكافه اطيافه. ما لم تكون هناك حقيقه ضربات موجعه لامريكا بالمقابل لن تخضع ولن تكون يعني جالسه على طاوله المفاوضات ولن تخرج من العراق. خير شاهد وخير دليل هي ما تفعله اليوم مع مع ايران من مفاوضات نوويه لانها تعلم ان ايران قويه جدا. Earlier in the day, the U.S.-supported Iraqi government condemned the United States for its air raid against the Iranian proxy militia PMF along the Iraq-Syria border, vowing to study all legal options in order to prevent such action from reoccurring. It is worth mentioning that this level of criticism directed at the United States' defensive action is evidently rare since Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadimi and his government is regarded as friendly to the United States and have actively tried to restrain the power of Iranian proxy militias operating in Iraq. Meanwhile, in the Italian capital, Rome, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken had a closing Q&A at a summit of the global coalition to defeat the Islamic State sought to defend Washington's decision to retaliate against the PMF. Uh, and given these ongoing attacks that uh, you referred to by Iran-backed groups targeting uh, our uh, interests in Iraq, uh, he directed further military action, we've taken action previously, to disrupt and deter uh, these attacks. Um, we took necessary, uh, appropriate, deliberate action that is designed to, to limit the risk of escalation but also to send a clear and unambiguous uh, deterrent message. Um, this uh, action in self-defense uh, to um, do what's necessary to um, prevent uh, further attacks, uh, I think sends a very uh, important and strong message. And uh, I hope very much that it is received by those uh, who uh, were intended to receive it. If, if when asked whether the United States holds the Islamic Republic of Iran responsible, 
Washington's top diplomat said the following. A, a, a number of the groups uh, involved in recent attacks are militia that are backed by Iran. It is worth mentioning, as a side note, that at the Global Coalition Summit in Rome, it has been decided to broaden the battle against the Islamic State in Syria in particular, as well as to widen its area of operations into the African continent as well. And while the United States is not oblivious to Iran's malign behavior throughout the Middle East, including vis-à-vis -vis its role in the attacks against U.S. forces in the region, the Biden administration is determined to draw a distinction between Tehran's problematic behavior and efforts to revive the 2015 nuclear agreement. Certainly, I would say, just kind of in relation to this question over here, uh, you know, we continue to believe that and have never held back from noting that Iran is a bad actor in the region. Um, and they have uh, taken part in and supported and participated in uh, problematic, uh, extremely problematic behavior, in our view. At the same time, uh, we feel that uh, we're moving forward and look seeking the opportunity to move forward on uh, nego negotiations to uh, prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon is in, in our national interest, and that's how we will evaluate. But it was not linked to a visit by uh, the President of Israel, nor was it linked to uh, any elections in uh, Iran either. While Washington's unyielding effort to revive the nuclear deal with Iran remains a point of disagreement between the United States and Israel, President Joe Biden pledged in a first meeting with his visiting Israeli counterpart, President Reuven Rivlin, that the Islamic Republic will never get a nuclear weapon on his watch. I just want to thank the, uh, the President for being here and, uh, and for your dedication to strengthening the relationship between the United States and Israel. Thank you. And uh, as the American press here can tell you, my commitment to Israel is well, they can't tell you anything, actually. They're not supposed to. But it's ironclad. It's real. It's, uh, it's something that uh, I often say, if there weren't an Israel, we'd have to invent one. And uh, so uh, this includes, uh, um, we're, you know, we're, we're committed to unwavering commitment to your self-defense. And uh, today we're going to be discussing a broad range of challenges, including Iran, what I can say to you, Iran will never get a nuclear weapon on my watch, as they say. God bless you. Israel have no greater friend, ally, than the United States of America. You are our best friends, and we are sharing, we are best friends, and the uh, balance between the people of Israel and the people of America is based on the understanding that we are sharing values, value values of democracy and values of liberalism. And because of that, of course, we, according to a real friendship, can from time to time discuss matters and even uh, uh, agree not to agree about everything. But we count on you in your um, really declaration just now, uh, really brought uh, the Israelis to understand that we have a great friend at the White House. We do. Uh, Mr. President, God bless you, God bless the people of America, and God bless the relationship between our two nations and to our two states. Following their meeting, which took place behind closed doors, President Rivlin voiced satisfaction by the assurances that were given by the American head of state to safeguard the national security interests of the state of Israel. We thank the, uh, uh, pr the president about his uh, uh, really readiness to help Israel and to help the uh, well-being of all the Israeli people and the security of Israel is something that is uh, touched by uh, touched by the uh, American ideas and the American needs. Uh, we are all together uh, thinking that uh, we have to cooperate a lot about uh, matters that uh, should be decided uh, by the Americans, by NATO, and by uh, uh, events that are happening in the Middle East as well. And uh, I must say that we found a real great friend uh, to Israel, and uh, I'm uh, very much um, uh, satisfied uh, by his announcement that uh, he is going to look that uh, there would be no nuclear weapon in the Middle East once we are talking about Iran. 
and uh, that he's going to invite the Prime Minister of Israel in the very next days in order to find a way uh, to cooperate, to exchange ideas about the necessities once we are talking about uh, what is happening in the Middle East and what is happening uh, with, between us and our neighbors.